Niue police this morning held a press conference calling for calm in Hikutawaki and the rest of the island after three buildings burned to the ground early hours of yesterday morning in the village of Hikutawaki. A residential property belonging to Mr and Mrs Ian Heeper and the young family was burnt to the ground. The cause of the fire is being deemed as deliberate. Nui police are in the process of investigating this crime. No arrests have as yet been made. Shortly after the fire occurred at the Heeper residence, the properties known as the Matap Bar and the Hikitavaki Village Hall were also destroyed by fire. A male person from Alothi North has been arrested and charged in relation to these two fires. He appeared before the court registrar of the Noe Court on Monday afternoon. At that hearing, he was granted interim bail by the registrar on special conditions. It is my understanding that these bail terms will be confirmed by the High Court judge in conjunction with the Justice Department on Wednesday, the 7th of December 2011. Now, more than ever, is a time for calm and sensible heads to enable the police investigation to be carried out. Police are making a general appeal for information in relation to the events in the early hours of Monday morning. Now is the time for the community of Hikitavaki and the wider community on this island to provide leadership and responsibility. To those that have information about this crime, now is the time to come forward, stand tall and say enough is enough. Do not hide in the shadows like those responsible for this matter. Noe Police will be providing further policing services to the law-abiding people of Hikitavaki in the form of nightly patrols. They will continue their investigations into both these matters over the coming days and weeks. They will carry out these inquiries based on the evidence at hand and with the information provided by the community so all persons responsible can be held to account as per the laws of this country. Niue Police would like to reiterate their plea to the public for calm and thank everyone for all their support. A continuation of Food and Agriculture Organisation FAO Telefood project continues this week as one consultant arrived on the island to assist the Department of DAF develop its program. The Telefood program was established to assist countries develop food programs and enhance sustainability. According to FAO program assistant Tevita Kerisoma, the Telefood program has been successful in some of new ways initiatives are about to start. Since uh, 1997 when it was first uh, initiated by, by, by the FEO and uh, Niue has had uh, a couple of projects uh, uh, approved and completed uh, then and uh, we, we have uh, now uh, uh, a system in place where all the requirements of this telephone program has now been dedicated to our office in Apia and we are in a much better position to respond now to this program. Whereas before, we were not really uh, very active in, 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 in getting it going because uh, of, of, of the, uh, the process that was uh, uh, undertaken at the time. Mm -hmm. But now with, uh, with, uh, with a change of uh, this uh, decentralization coming to our, to our office, uh, we've been dedicated the authority to, to take it up and, and, uh, and have the project fully uh, uh, organized by our office in Apia. Mr. Karasoma said Niue receives money by annum to assist with each approved project proposal. Now we have about six projects uh, uh, in line now with our program. We have also on fisheries and there's one on uh, agriculture farming uh, already approved. Uh, they are now in the process of implementing those two uh, with the department and we have about four other projects pending our system that are also in line for approval very soon. It's related to uh, chicken farm as well as uh, uh, crop production. Now you, you, um, you mentioned that um, these projects are uh, in line to get approval uh, and some have been approved to start the um, implementation. Now how much are these um, how much are these projects uh, proposed to, I guess, for implementation? What are we looking at in regards to figures? Uh, in regards to figures, uh, you know, it's member countries, including uh, Niue. You have about 50,000 that's available to you on a yearly basis under this program. And FAO works on a biannum, so over a biannum of two years, you have an allocation of about 100,000 mm -hmm. 
available to the countries that they can utilize under the areas of this uh, program. Now, how optimistic are you with NIWA's, um, I guess NIWA's drive to have these projects implemented and how optimistic are you that it will work? Because a lot of programs in the past um, that people always comment once the funding is um, gone, they stop. Yeah, that's a good question because uh, 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 throughout from our experience in this program, we've had a, a quite a, a fair a fair rate of success for, for most of this program because they are community-based and you have the whole uh, community involved in it. And also you have the, uh, the department uh, involved in it. And the, the success of it really depends on the group themselves uh, to, to, to organize themselves. If, if they are not very uh, active or proactive, if they're not committed to it, then you might have some problem with your project. But if you are fully committed to it, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't have a success rate, uh, a successful rate with uh, all the projects that we have here. Each country, including Niue, is hoping the projects will make an impact on Niue's food production and security. The Pacific nation did not come to Durban to fail. This was the assertion made by the president of Nauru, Honorable Mr. Sprint Davido, at the opening plenary of the high-level United Nations Climate Change Conference in Durban, South Africa. President Dawida was speaking on behalf of the Pacific Small Island States, an informal grouping presented at the United Nations that includes Cook Island, Fiji, Kiribati, Marshall Islands, Micronesia, Nauru, Niue, Palau, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu and Vanuatu. He said our conversation about climate change and the challenge that addressing this growing crisis entails has ended its third decade. This audience is certainly aware of the worst consequences of inaction, though they are still worth repeating, so we do not forget the magnitude of the task before us. Some 20,000 delegates, including seasoned international climate change negotiators from across the globe, are in Durban for the UN Climate Change Conference. Outlooks have been mixed as negotiators stand their ground on key climate change issues on the conference agenda. He said, I am from the Pacific and the 14 island nations in our group are often said to be on the front lines of this struggle. The combat metaphor is apt because it is not an exaggeration to say that climate change is for us a matter of life and death. And to end our news bulletin for this evening, Nui Rugby has dropped two rankings in the International Rugby Board table after losing to Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands in last week's Furu competition in Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea. The Heat got the best of the boys as they play the more conditioned Melanesian teams, losing first to the Solomon Islands, then to local favourites, Papua New Guinea. Even though the team played well, the Heat was just too much for the visitors. Niue dropped from 68th ranking to 70th on the world table out of 93 countries, with rival Solomon Islands increasing ranking from 75th to 69th placing. Papua New Guinea is ranked 47th on the IRB board table. The Rugby Sevens has not fared well either. After the Gold Coast tournament, Niue is ranked 18th out of two tournaments, Brisbane and Dubai, with one point, edging out United Arab Emirates in 19th and Zimbabwe in 20th placing. Mosa on the island is hoping the recent appointment of new coach Clinton Chapman will improve the island's ranking with hopeful prospect of changing the IRB ranking. The Sevens representative arrived back on the island last Friday and the 15th representative team will be back this Friday. We'll bring you more on this story with an interview with Clinton next week. That's our news bulletin for this evening. Good night.